Welcome to the Colorful Knits podcast. My name is Maggie and this is my channel where I love to share all about my knitting and crochet and crafting adventures. My goodness, it has been some time since I sat down and chatted with you. I think my last podcast was maybe June or July. I can't remember at this point. Um, but my goodness, I have so much to share with you today. I have so many projects to share with you. I have some uh, life updates and news to share with you today. Um, so I'm just gonna dive into it and let's get cozy. I hope everybody has been doing so well. I hope everybody enjoyed their summer. My summer was pretty busy, not in the best way, um, but overall not bad. Um, I did finish summer sock camp. I unfortunately did not get as much sock knitting done as I wanted, um, but I can explain why. Um, later on the episode, I'll share kind of a life update, life news update um, towards the end of the episode. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Um, but let's start off with my usual uh, tea time. Today I am drinking uh, Twinnings Apple Spiced Chai in this super cute mug I found from Goodwill a while ago. I just made it so it's still very hot. Like I wanna chug it, but it's too hot. So actually I'll share one of um, my newest life updates, we adopted another kitty this year. Come to show you before he runs away, but this is Severus. Uh, we named him Severus, but we call him Bean or Beans. Um, <laughs> I figured he'd run away, but I wanted to uh, get him while I had him. Anyways, in July this past summer, um, it was actually the 4th of July weekend to be exact because I remember it so specifically but it was a, a Friday and I came home from work and outside was this black little fluff ball like hopping around my garden like meowing meowing and crying and then another little fluff ball appeared a, a gray and white fluff ball appeared so there were two little baby kittens hopping around my garden and uh, they were like crying they looked a little mangy um, and I figured that there would be like a whole litter of them and a mom around somewhere. So <clears throat> the day went on and I kind of like left them alone, but kept an eye on them, kept like looking out my window, kept going outside. And it was only them for most of the day. And they were like crying and crying, like they were hungry and they looked very, like their fur was all like dirty. So I was like, oh, they must have got separated from the mother. So I made the mistake of feeding them uh, food and ever since I fed them, they stayed around on my porch and they were just little babies. I assumed that they were only maybe a month old. Um, they're very tiny. Uh, they were very skittish. Like they, they wouldn't let me pet them. They wouldn't let me go near them. So I kept my distance, but I fed them, gave them water for a couple of weeks and but they stayed on my porch they would sleep on my swing and at the time my husband and i weren't looking to bring in any more cats we already have two i asked around if anybody wanted any kittens um the humane society was overflowing so i figured i would just keep feeding them until maybe somebody decided they wanted them because i really didn't want to separate them i did notice uh that they were male cats and they were like inseparable they would sleep together and um so yeah that kind of went on for majority of the summer i just kind of fed them and they were they seemed very content on the porch i could tell though that their eyes were all kind of like goopy and crusty and so i figured they probably had upper respiratory infections uh, they definitely had fleas they were like scratching I could tell they had worms because their bellies were super full and uh so yeah it was about a couple a couple weeks went by and i kept feeding them and then the one day i left for work early in the morning and i saw an adult cat that looked just like the gray and white one which i assumed was either the mother or the dad and they were kind of like cautious and like scrounging for food and ever since that cat came 
the the gray and white kitten went away so i'm assuming they reunited um i tried to see like where they went to uh but the black one severus or bean uh stayed he was very very content on my porch it was so sweet um eventually once i pet him like he would not leave me alone i would walk outside and he would come hopping up to me and he was just so precious and so uh my husband and i was like you know fall's coming soon nobody seems to want a kitten we should just bring him in so we brought him in and my other cats don't love him uh he's very playful um, yeah, I took him to the vet, of course, got him all fixed up, and he's so much better now. The vet actually said he was five months old, and here I was telling everybody he was, like, a month old. And it's just, he's so cute. He's very playful, very curious, um, gets into everything, very nosy. <laughs> gets into everything, but also very snuggly and very sweet. Um, so, yeah, that was, um, I did not have that on my bucket list of uh this year but yeah it just worked out i felt like it was just meant to be like he almost chose us and um so yeah we love him and i don't know i feel like maybe throughout the episode you'll probably see him like climbing on stuff back here but so yeah that was i wanted to wait till the end of the episode to share that but he's like walking around like sniffing all my stuff so i figured i'd share that so let's get talking to the yarn if you hear him like eating food over here or if you're like scratching that's just him and i apologize <laughs> for the noise uh but for real um let's dive into uh some finished objects i actually only have a couple finished objects like i said it's been I haven't really had much time this summer to make stuff. I was able to finish some things, so let me show you. There are two objects that I had shared about my previous podcast that I did finish. And my first one being my terracotta ribbed tank top. I think I finished this mm, July maybe, I think it was July. Um, it was a super quick, easy project. It was all worked in one panel and then connected um, up the sides. And I did share the yarn that I used in previous episode. It was a KNC um, brand from Joann's and I think the color was called Santa Fe. It is 100% cotton. I've worn it so many times at this point. It was just a perfect, perfect um, summer tank top. And so I'll share uh, that pattern. It was a free pattern, very easy, very size inclusive. And yeah, so that was my summer project. I loved it. I am definitely into the uh, crochet tank tops because I feel like they're just so versatile and you can wear them so many different ways. And yeah, I've really been enjoying making these in the summertime. Uh, next I have two pairs of finished socks. So I'm gonna pull out these bad boys. Actually, I'm gonna grab my right, socks. So walker. I knit these and, well, I started these socks in, I think, February of this year, and it took me months to finish these. I don't know why, I just really struggled with getting these done, but these are my Stardew Valley-inspired scrappy socks. So, this striped section, these striped sections, this was a colorway from uh, Nico Norb Craft Co., um, and this was her pixelated farm game um, striping yarn inspired by Stardew Valley and I had this purple and this um, blue and this dark green like scraps that I just I don't know I was feeling I've never done scrappy socks before and um, I had just a tiny little bit of the Stardew colorway left over so I was like I think I'll just make some scrappy socks I did have kind of like an inspiration picture that I think I shared last podcast um, of like the colors, but yeah, they were, they were a lot of fun. They took, I don't know why they just were a pair that just lingered forever, but I got them done, except I have some sad news. I wore them and I washed them. Also, I always machine wash my hand knit socks, <laughs> um, just on a delicate cycle, um, warm water, and then I dry them on ultra low heat in the dryer and they always come out totally fine but so this was definitely um a my mistake the way I sewed it I don't know if when I switched colors I didn't 
um, secure, but they started coming apart on both of them. You can see right where I like joined the colors. So now I gotta fix them and I don't wanna fix them. <laughs> so they've just been kind of sitting in my drawer. So I'll get to them eventually. But yeah, these were, these were a lot of fun to make. Um, I have so much scrap yarn that I think for Christmas this year, I might try to make some scrappy socks for gifts. Um, that's a goal, so we'll see. So yeah, those were finally finished after very, very <laughs> few long ones. And the next pair that I finished, I just started these in, I think beginning of September, actually. I don't know, I'm really bad at keeping track of things. <laughs> I like never write stuff down or keep track, I just do it. Um, but yeah, I was feeling very, very inspired like for fall and autumn colors. And I found this yarn. This is a Regia yarn. Oh my gosh, these just scream autumn. I think the color was called cardamom. I think, I could be wrong, but I just found this on Amazon. Um, yeah, I think the color was called karma, but I could always link the, uh, link it below in the description box if you were interested in this color. Um, but yeah, I love, I really have just been loving this, um, like the opal and the regia, um, just like the very rustic wool for these like winter months. And I just love the way the colors look up. It's so unique. I wore these yesterday. So there's probably like cat hair all over them. I don't know if you can see, you can see. but yeah, these were my first autumn uh, socks. And I looked through my knit sock drawer and realized that I have mostly like super bright socks, which obviously I love, but I just, I was like, I really feel like I need some autumn moody socks. So yeah, this was the first pair that I finished for autumn. Yeah, that is the only finished objects that I have, I believe. Yeah, uh, the rest are lots of um, whips. <laughs> so let's dive into that. I will start with, um, I saw, saw on Pinterest um, a crochet top that someone had made and I was super inspired and I was like, oh, I really would love to make that. So I bought the yarn and I started it. <clears throat> so actually the, the pattern that I <laughs> saw originally was a zigzag um, like crop top sweater oh now he's gonna be bad now he's trying to get into everything he's a very curious little bugger anyways i'm sorry if i get super distracted by him this like whole episode um anyways the original sweater was a cropped zigzag sweater i started it and ripped it out like five times i don't know if i just wasn't in the right brain space for that pattern but i was like Oh, I'm tired of like pulling this out and redoing it. I'm just gonna do granny square instead, or granny stripe instead. So I got the colors. Um, I just got the big twist from Joann's um, and this very pretty orange and then uh, a gray, a light pink and a brown. And I just, I don't know, it feels pretty autumn and I just really loved the color palette. So yeah, it's just gonna be a crochet like cropped t-shirt sweater. I haven't worked on it much only here and there, but um, I don't think it will take me long to finish because obviously it's worsted weight. And yeah, I really like the the brown and the orange and like the pink isn't picking up on camera. It's like really, it almost looks white on camera, I feel, but it's a, it's a pretty light pink. Um, I feel like it just kind of breaks up those darker colors. So yeah, I'm excited to finish this and wear it. I think it would be super cute for fall. That is the only um, garment that I'm working on right now. I have, no, I lied. I have two shawls I'm working on. I consider those garments as well. So how about I show you those actually? So I'm working on the shawl. I have this super cute little boo bag that my friend got me last Halloween and I love it. It's just a little canvas bag, but great for like bigger projects. Um, I bought some yarn from, 
uh, Dragon Horde yarn. I saw this colorway on Instagram and immediately fell in love. The colorway is called Ethereal Woods. It's 75 superwash, 25 nylon. I originally, I had no idea what I was going to make with it, but look at those dark moody colors. I don't know if it's even picking it up. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I'm loving the dark colors. Um, so I had no idea what I was going to do with this. I bought three skeins. Um, I kind of had a shawl in mind, but I wasn't sure. And um, I did end up picking a shawl and I had made this shawl twice. It is a great, great, great pattern. It is uh, the Ladies Lightweight Shawl Sweet Cherry Wine Crochet Shawl from Bag -Day Crochet. Um, this is a paid for pattern, so I'm trying not to give it away. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a very, very pretty, um, super easy, like repetitive, uh, like three row pattern. I feel like you could use any size yarn, which actually I feel like you can because I made two shawls with like a worsted weight, but I just used a bigger hook, size hook to give it that more lacy look. And this is a fingering weight and I'm also using a bigger hook to give it like a lacy look. But let me show you what I have done so far. Let me see. It's like been... <laughs> like been crumpled in the bag so i apologize it's kind of all like wrinkly but oh my gosh it's beautiful 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 super halloween woodsy vibes which i feel like i don't have a ton of in my wardrobe i'm very like obviously drawn to bright colors but something about fall that just i don't know i get to enjoy all those dark moody colors not that i can't ever but i like to enjoy them more this um season for sure so yeah i'm loving this yarn um highly suggest go checking out her yarn her colors are oh my god they're so beautiful and like very fairy core inspired and um moody if you're into that so i definitely suggest uh checking her out i don't know how if i'll go through um or maybe i only bought two skeins actually now that i think of it i think i only bought two skeins not three but if I end up not using all of this, I think I will definitely cake up some socks. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So that is my first shawl. I think I started that also in September. Most of, you'll kind of see a pattern. I feel like most of my um, like dark moody colors, I definitely started in September. Now this next shawl, I definitely started this in the summertime, maybe even June or July, I can't remember. But I have never knit a shawl. I've only ever crocheted a shawl, but I saw this yarn at a yarn shop. Um, I think it is, oh no, I don't know if I saved the tag. Oh, I did, okay. Oh, this is Madeline Tosh. Um, and the twist light in the colorway is Pure Imagination. I think it's a Willy Wonka inspired yarn, but I saw it and I was like, oh, that would be really pretty for a shawl now i only they only had one skein so i got one skein and i don't think uh madeline tosh still makes this colorway so it's not a huge deal but um i don't remember i found a, a free uh, i don't know if it was a free pattern anyways i found a pattern on ravelry for um this really pretty shawl i don't remember what it's called i don't remember the designer because i haven't touched this since i started in like july i think or august but I'll share it on the screen and uh, the pattern is actually really simple. I can't remember if it's free or not, so I don't wanna like give anything away, but the pattern is super easy. So this is what I have so far. Oh, I love the way these colors work together. I just love it. Yeah, I have not picked this up since I started it. Um, I think this will be a very nice like December or January winter project to pick back up. Um, but right now I'm just really feeling Halloween dark moody colors. So, so yeah, I definitely recommend this pattern. Super easy. Um, it would be great if I got, um, if I could own, like if I was able to just use one skein, that would be fantastic. If not, I could always add more colors. Like it's not a huge deal, but I just loved, I'm just, it's like just garter stitch. So super easy, super mindless. Um, so yeah, that is my other shawl that will probably be in the works for quite a while, I already can tell, but that's okay. That's 
it's okay. Uh, all right, of course, I think the other whips I have are, of course, socks. So let me just dive into my giant basket here and show you all the sock whips I have going. <laughs> okay, so I cast on, I went through like, I bought uh, like a ton of fall inspired like commercial opal and um patent croix just like the commercial rustic yarn so I could make some nice socks for fall and I found this opal yarn I don't think I saved the tag I'm so bad at saving tags um is it oh I did save it okay so this is the opal opal Sorry if there's a glare, because I'm sitting right in front of a window. Um, I never, I never know what the color, I should Google it so I know, um, but I never know what the color lot is, if it's that or this one. But anyways, this is how it's working up. Really fun, very funky colors. Um, I'm also using a Patton's Croix plum color for the cuff and I'll use it for the toe and heel too. I don't know. I just really like this color. It's very unique and I don't know. It's a lot of fun. I just love working like the way opal yarn works up and it's like a surprise even though it shows you on the label. I just like pretend I don't see it and then I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, this is um, I like started this probably August, maybe the beginning of September and I haven't touched it shocker uh okay i do have another sock going this is Patton's quarry sock in the color midnight orchid um i love these stripes i think the colors are so pretty and i'm pairing it with another Patton's croy i don't know what this color is because i had it like for years so I don't know, I don't have the tag, but it's like, just like this pretty like brown, I just thought it paired. So I'm making, I just decided to make a, like a crew sock. So I'm actually at the toe on this and I should just finish the toe. Like I just have a few more decrease rounds, but I like set it aside. I haven't worked on it in weeks, but I'll probably get, I'll, I'll get to it for sure. So I have that sock and then I have I did cast on a Halloween sock. I have this in my super cute Halloween vintage treats bag. Uh, I do not know the designer of this bag, um, but I can share. I'm not sure if they're, I got it on Etsy, so I'm not sure if they're still like a shop or not, but I'll share that. So I got this yarn also at, um, the yarn shop and it is a Lang Yarns Joel Magic. Um, the colorway, I don't know if there's a colorway. Um, I don't think there's a color. I mean, I'm sure there is, but I don't know. It's a super wash. It is 75% virgin wool, 25% poly polyamide nylon. Um, anyways, so this was, I got this over the summer actually, and it immediately caught my eye and I was like, oh, that would be very fun for Halloween. And I'm glad I did because it is a lot of fun and it is working up beautifully, beautifully, beautifully. I have my little crystal ball, I don't know if it's going to show, my little crystal ball stitch marker. Come on, pick it up. I just want to pick it up. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, this sock is so fun. It's just that very rustic feel. I think these are going to be super warm. Um, yeah, it's just like a pink to orange to purple color striped. So that's a lot of fun. Um, again, I always do all my socks on nine inch circulars. I usually use the Chow Goo. Um, I do have a pair of the Clover Bamboo Needles, which I don't love. But, I mean, they work. They get the job done. So, yeah, those are my current sock whips. I do have some more, but I actually will share that more in the life update section. So, yeah, that was my big basket of socks. 
Um, these will probably be set aside for a while and I'll just get to them when I do. Um, I just love having just like all these socks at once. I don't know. It's like if I'm tired of working on one sock and I get bored of it, I can work on another one for a little bit. Um, so yeah, that is all of my knitting and crochet that I have going on right now. Oh yeah, actually, I almost forgot. I did, I did um, crochet some cute little pumpkins. I made about like 10 of them to sell. Um, this was a perfect stash buster. I did not follow pattern, I just did did, oh my gosh, did I do double crochet? I think I did double crochet back loop, like just a rectangle, or maybe I did half double back loop. I think I did double. And then you just seen the top and bottom, and then I just used a cinnamon stick for the top and just bought some green ribbon to tie around the stem. So I just grabbed a ton of scrap yarn that I had and just made a whole bunch. And that was a super quick, easy, fun fall project. And that is all of uh, the yarny chat for now, but I did start a new craft that I wanted to share. Um, I have it here in my little basket that I got from Goodwill. Sometimes I keep socks in there. I just kind of just throw whatever craft in there. It's just like the perfect size basket. So I tried out English paper piecing because I've been seeing it in a couple podcasters and I was like, I think I want to try that. So I did. So I bought, I bought, oh, I knew that was going to happen. I knew he was going to jump off. I have this like little tray here that I set on the arm of the chair so I can like put my tea and I knew he was going to jump on it and he did. He didn't burn, so he's fine. I just had to shoot him away. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so I tried out English paper piecing. I bought, um, I bought this kit on Etsy. It is Rachel Ann Textiles Hexi Starter Kit. And it came with um, the uh, hexagon um, template, like paper templates. And it came with um, a couple pieces of fabric um, that were already cut into hexagon and you just have to glue the pieces on. So it was really easy. I I had no idea what I was doing, so of course I looked on YouTube because you can learn anything on YouTube. So I pulled it up on YouTube, and I also bought a kit on Amazon. It was like a little starter kit, and it also came with like a glue stick and clips, and it also came with some fabric. Um, I didn't love the fabric because it seemed more like kid heavy, almost like a baby blanket. Um, but, and it came with needles and a thing of thread. It came with like lime green thread, which I kind of wish it would just came with like white or black or something, but I can always go buy my own thread. But anyways, yeah, it was a super easy um, craft. I really liked it. Yeah, you just glue the paper templates um, or glue the fabric onto the paper templates and then you just sew them, hand sew together. So I put these little pieces together for more like fall inspired colors. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with this. I have no intention of making a quilt. Um, I have a sewing machine, but I don't normally sew that much at home. Um, but hand sewing is actually very easy, and which I knew how to do that. Hand sew was pretty simple. Um, but you, I, I just don't know if I did it like completely right because you can kind of see the stitches. I also don't know if it's just the thread. But yeah, I. This was like super quick to work up. I was like, this could be really cute as like coasters. Like if I made some like coasters or I saw on Pinterest, people were making like little trinket bowls out of this, which I don't know. Maybe you could just like, I don't know how you would get it to a bowl shape, maybe Mod Podge or something. I don't know, but I love this. I thought it was so cute. And the craft itself was really just like laid back and relaxing. So, yeah, I would like to keep going with this. Um, I can definitely see that it won't be a craft that I do like every day, like the way I do knitting crochet, but yeah, this is a lot of fun and I'm glad I like looked into it. Cause I saw, like I said, I saw a couple podcasters talk about it and actually my sister 
um, years ago, she had like shown me. And recently I was like, oh my God, yeah, what? She did show me that years ago. So yeah, I think it would be fun to buy some like seasonal fabric and put together some like little things. Maybe I could even sew this on a bag or something. I don't know. Or like crochet a bag and then like put this on. That would be really cute too. So yeah, that, that is a fun uh, little craft to try if you haven't yet and maybe you've been on the fence about it. I think it's a very cheap, affordable craft. And yeah, I'm excited to see what I do with that in the future. But yeah, that is all the crafts I have. Um, I have been actually doing some reading lately, so I figured I could share some books and some shows that I've been watching. So I'm sure you've probably seen this book everywhere. And that's how I found out about it was the Pumpkin Spice Cafe book and the Cinnamon Bond bookstore. I've seen them everywhere. And I was like, you know what? I'm really in the mood for just a, like a cozy autumn book. And I bought it and I read it and it was so cute. Super duper cute, very wholesome, very, there's like a little bit of spice to it, but nothing like, I don't know. If you're not into that, it's not like extreme, um, but it's definitely, not pg i would say um but very cute very wholesome it definitely gives me like hallmark slash girl gilmore girls vibes like it just had that like small town setting very cute definitely recommend and i am reading the cinnamon bun bookstore which is the second book um of that series now so i'm not super far so i can't even really talk about that one but i can't wait to finish it definitely recommend I also started reading um, Agatha Christie's Halloween Halloween Party, I think it's called. I have never ever read an Agatha Christie book, but I hear so much about her. So um, yeah, I was just browsing my Kindle looking for Halloween books and that one popped up. So I started reading that. I will say I did find it a little hard to read. Maybe, I don't know if it's just this book specifically, but I can tell that she's like an, she was like an older, author older as in like like I'm pretty sure like like before 1900s maybe maybe I'm wrong I don't know but it just it, it's kind of hard like the dialogue and the way they talk it's kind of hard I thought so it was kind of hard to get through but so I'm still going with that um but it's cute it's like a little murder mystery story so I'm reading that as well I also started the bookshops and bone dust book um I did read the legends and lattes book and absolutely loved it so I wanted to read this one too and I also did not get very far but yeah I got my reading mojo back and it has been really awesome so if you have any recommendations uh preferably right now like seasonal like whether it's a mystery horror just a cozy autumn I would love your recommendations for sure so yeah that's what I've been reading now as for tv shows I think I had said we don't watch like a ton of tv um or if I do it's always like the same shows that I throw on for like background noise but anyways we did start watching um only murders in the building it's on hulu and it has steve martin Martin Shore and Selena Gomez, and it is so good. Um, it's a very, I, it's not like PG, like there's a lot of swearing and um, like death and violence, but it's also wholesome, which is interesting, but it's very good. It's very comedy heavy, I think, and Steve Martin is just amazing and in everything he does. So if you were looking for kind of like a more lighthearted comedic, spooky season type show i definitely recommend that one definitely we also just started watching um oh my gosh i can't think of what it's called okay i remember it's called the fall of the house of usher on netflix so if you've watched um like haunting of hill house haunting of blind manor midnight mass um which those are all fantastic series if you love like horror definitely recommend those so this one i think came out last year and we did not watch it, so we started watching that very spooky. So we're a couple episodes in on that. And that's about it. I've been watching like my favorite classic Halloween movies. Um, 
I just love this time of year so much. It just brings out so, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people can relate to the autumn season. I don't know what it is. There's just something about it that just makes me feel alive. That sounds very dramatic, but it's true. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to save the best for last. I have a life update I wanted to share. I'm not usually, um, I'm a pretty private person. I don't really usually share um, a lot of like my private life on the internet. Um, sorry, I'm gonna get cozy here. Here's my tea, cause it's gonna be a little bit of a chatty segment. Anyways, I, this past month at the end of August, beginning of September actually, I quit my full-time job. Um, I worked at this company for three years and it was, it was a, a fantastic job. I loved the work. The work was amazing and it was great, but I just had this feeling of that I was just ready for something more. And I've been sitting on the thought of um, starting my own yarn dyeing business. And the past year I've been, you know, dyeing yarn and playing around with it and um, just hand dyed yarn itself has been such a big part of my life these last few years like as someone who purchased a lot of it and used and worked with it and I always felt like I saw myself sorry I got distracted by the kitten he's trying to jump up again <laughs> anyways um I kind of forget where I was going or what I was even saying um yeah, I just, I was ready to move on to something new and um, I've just had this dream of, I've had this dream for such a long time of being my own boss and running my own company and just that like the corporate life wasn't for me anymore. I was always somebody that just like, you know, work, 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 work and um, yeah, I just my family experienced a very um traumatic loss in 2021 we lost our our dad in a very traumatic way and i feel like that kind of just like altered my brain chemistry of you know just in a way so of how i really want to live my life you know life is so short and i've just really been feeling a way of how how I want to live my life and I feel like we're so conditioned to you know live life a certain way and you know work 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 and then and then once the work is done then you can rest and then you can play and I don't know I just felt like that's not the the way I wanted to live my life and it's totally okay if that's a lifestyle people enjoy I totally understand but I definitely felt myself wanting to slow down a more, live a more slower paced life and do something that truly brings me so much passion and joy which is the fiber arts community and and yarn and um so yeah i left my full-time job in um the beginning of september and i started working at a coffee shop with my sister and it has been like the most fun and i started a yarn business um it is called stevie yarn co and I launched my shop officially on, um, uh, no, September, 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 <laughs> sorry, some, th the timeline is kind of getting away from me, um, yeah, September is when I officially launched my shop, I did just kind of like a soft launch, and, um, yeah, I just took that leap, and, which is not easy when you're so used to, like when you're used to living your life a certain way and like overworking yourself to, to to slow down completely and take that huge leap was very scary but it has been amazing and I'm just blown away by the support of the knitting and crochet community and I feel like I have I have made so many online friends that have been so supportive and encouraging even more than people I've known like my whole life and I think that is 
just crazy to me like just how how much the fiber arts community how powerful it is for people and just how much it has brought to my life and has gotten me through so much of my life and so yeah i took that giant leap and i'm so thankful that i have like the most supportive partner who believes in my dreams and believes in me and um you know believes in more than just working a nine to five and so i just feel grateful that i've had the privilege of being able to pursue my dreams and 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 do that so yeah that was that was i'm sorry that was like a very personal long rant but also that's that's real life you know it's easy for me to sit here and you know show you all these happy beautiful things that i make but at the end of the day you know we all go through very hard things and I think it's very important to sit back and ask yourself what do you want out of this life and and I did that and it has been so wonderful and with that being said I wanted to share some of my yarn that I dyed so in September I released my uh just one single colorway but I guess I should backtrack a little bit um so I had this vision in my head of like um launching a colorway monthly and it is stardew valley themed if you've been here a while i'm pretty sure i've talked about stardew valley multiple times which i've just shown you a pair of socks earlier <laughs> that was inspired by that um but my goal is the 13th of every month release my official stardew Col stardew valley colorway alongside other colorways of course but this will be like the featured colorway of the month and every month will be different obviously so september was my colorway called dance of the moonlight jellies and i'll pop a picture up here this was the color inspiration of the game they have like seasonal events so i wanted to go with like the seasonal colors so this was an end of summer colorway and i have it caked up actually let me just show you um my finished sock first all right so this was my first uh launch colorway this is uh dance of the moonlight jellies and it is this rich deep uh blue inspired by like the ocean and then i had the contrasting mini which was the moonlight jellies which is like this very pretty light pink color I could not be more thrilled with this colorway. It it came out exactly as I visioned in my head on the first try. And it was just a dream. It was an absolute dream. So I did finish the first sock um, so I could test the colorway out and share. Um, so yeah, that was my September launch. And I was so overwhelmed with the responses the support the people who showed up for this colorway and i really am just i feel so grateful like it still doesn't feel real and um so this colorway is definitely always going to be like the most special because it was my very first color launch and i did not finish the second sock but i'm still working on it i just like cannot get enough of this rich rich blue it just it's perfect and then there's my pink my pink mini it's kind of in a ball because i think one of the cats got a hold of it so yeah that was my first colorway and it was very successful and um exciting and it just really like opened up the floodgates of oh my gosh all the things that i cannot wait to share with you guys i actually started another youtube channel thinking i wanted to keep that separate for um actually i don't even think i told you the name of the yarn company so let me backtrack um the name of my business is called stevie yarn co um named after my dad and um yeah so anyways i started uh, another youtube channel that i wanted to just focus kind of on the yarn but i don't know i think trying to manage two different youtubes would just just sounds kind of like a lot of work and i don't know over here on my podcast 
you know, I'm already talking so much about yarn and what I'm working on that this just seems like the place I just need to share. So yeah, that was my first lunch and very, very exciting. Um, so with that being said, I had mentioned about um, the specialty colorway releasing the 13th of every month. So for October's colorway, which will be released this Sunday on the 13th, is my next Stardew colorway, which I also have right now. I'm marking it up in this polar, polar bear yarn bag, my favorite. You know, I always talk over and over about how much I love these bags. This Halloween one is so cute. Uh, please go check out her shop. I will link her below. Um, anyway, so this is uh, this month's color. This is called the Spirits Eve Festival based off of the Spirits Eve Festival in Stardew Valley. And it is our um, ha like very heavily inspired Halloween. It has like the green, orange, and black. And let me show you the inspiration picture there. So it's like, you know, a maze, a haunted maze with like green hedges with some blue flame candles on top. And there's lots of oranges and dark black shadows. So I tried to capture that and I think it came out perfectly. And then for the mini, I have the golden pumpkin, um, which is spoiler ahead if you have not played Stardew Valley or did the haunted maze. The golden pumpkin is what you get at the end of the maze. So paired together, as we have, let me show you how it is working up. Oh my gosh, I love it. I It just, just doesn't feel real. Like, like I'm making this, like I I dyed this. Like it doesn't, it, I don't know. Everything still feels so new and like surreal to me. And it's just very, also very exciting. So I love the way like, the orange is kind of like striping. I just love it. I love it. I don't, I feel like the camera is like kind of blowing the colors out a little bit. But anyways, yeah, so this is our Spirit Eve festival colorway that will be released this Sunday, the 13th. Um, so along with the Stardew Valley colorway, I'm releasing some collars that will like always be available in the shop. I have two to share today. Um, I still have some that are going to be in the dye pans um, this next week. So let me just share what I have. Actually, this is a colorway I talked about um, last podcast that I had dyed um, just like having fun, but I absolutely fell in love with this color that I'm like, this needs to be on the shop. And I named it Girly Pop. I don't know why. It just, that's the name that popped in my head. It's just very fun, very girly. So Girly Pop. Yeah, it's just this rich, super rich fuchsia, hot fuchsia with um, like a blue, bluish purple um, dusting speckled on it. And the last podcast I did, I do believe I shared because I've still been working on it. But this is what it looks like worked up and it is beautiful if I do say so myself. I just love this bright, bright color. Um, and I also have, I don't know if I brought it with me though. Oh, I did. I dyed um, these dark periwinkle minis uh, to go along with it as a sock set. If you want a sock set, if not, this is available, you know, just as a single skein. You don't have to purchase it as a sock set, but that's what one of my first colors that will always be available on the shop. Very squishy, very beautiful. Okay. So my last color that I'm going to share. Um, I do not have this worked up yet, but hopefully soon I'll be able to. I'm trying to be really good about having samples made, but I tend to dye faster than I can knit. So... <laughs> With that being said, this is my Soul Soul colorway um, inspired by The Sims, uh, one of my longtime favorite games ever. Um, yeah, it's just this really rich, um, like lime green with this with these blue hues, um, and there will be a light green plum plum bob blob bob plum bob 
<laughs> Plum Bob Mini to pair with it. So yeah, these right now are two colors that are going to be added to the shop as well on Sunday. The Stardew Valley colorways will only be available for a limited amount of time, um, but these colors will always be on the shop. Um, and like I said, I do have some other colorways that are going to be added to the shop as well. Um, Stardew Valley monthly, specialty yarn monthly, along with just other colorways that I add. So yeah, that is my life update. Super exciting. I just cannot stop beaming. I feel so grateful, so happy to be able to slow down. Um, I just feel like these last few years have been very all over the place, very busy, very exhausting, and it has felt so good to be able to slow down and actually think about what I want to do and what I want to do with this yarn business and I will probably sound like a broken record for the next few episodes too, but I'm very, very excited to share all of this with you and can never ever thank you guys enough for all of your support and your kind comments. Like it, it means so much truly. And now that I have more time, I am really looking forward to sitting down and sharing my projects with you because this has been one of my favorite things ever to be able to sit down and chat with you and get to know you guys and meet you guys and yeah i'm just really looking forward to what this next year brings and i'm grateful if you are along this journey with me so as always please 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 share what you're working on because i love to see everybody's projects or what you're reading or watching um but i hope you have the most fantastic spooky season autumn season and i'll see you again next time